Welcome to Epic Space Models. In this episode, we will model the engine cluster of the BFR booster. Let's get started. The BFR is a massive rocket, so massive that it has 31 Raptor engine on its first stage. And because these engines has to be tightly packed together, I first start by creating a drawing with the layout of the 31 engine and the footprint of all the rocket nozzle. And I use it to make sure that I don't have two rocket nozzle overlapping because this would basically make the model impossible to put together. So the layout is one central engine followed by a ring of six engines followed by two rings of 12 engines. So one plus six plus 12 plus 12 for a total of 31. And as you can see, there is not much clearance between two rocket nozzles, so they are really, really tightly packed together. So now that the layout is in place, I start drawing the bottom of the rocket core. So as you can see, these three rings are offsetted along the vertical axis. Maybe, I guess, it's to make more room for the rocket nozzle to gimbal. So the engines themselves are reused from the upper stage, I mean the actual spaceship. In 2018, SpaceX decided to use the same engines and especially the same rocket nozzle for both the booster and the spaceship. It's uh, mainly to save on development cost. So because we already created a model of the engines when we modeled the spaceship, we can reuse this model as it is and just copy paste it in the model of the engine cluster of the booster. So this saves on modeling time. So for each ring of engine, I place one engine on each ring and then I use the circular pattern command to create the remaining engines of the ring. One of the things that you want to be careful when using the linear or circular repetition is that these commands do not add constraints. So they do not lock the components in place. So if you don't add like group constraints to lock all the engines in place together, your engines will be somehow free floating in your 3D model and you might move one engine out of place without even realizing it. So now that we have the 31 engines in place, I keep working on the design of the rocket core for the, the bottom plate where the engines are mounted. And what I'm doing now is to carve the inside of the mount plate so that I have a constant thickness uh, for both the outer ring, middle ring, and inner ring and central engine. So uh, the next thing that I'm doing is to check for interferences. So interference basically means two parts overlapping. And this is something that you want to avoid because if you have two parts overlapping, then you won't be able to assemble the model in the real world. So this is good enough for uh, computer graphics, but not good enough for a real physical object. So the first source of interference is that uh, so far, there were no holes for the rocket nozzle to fit inside the mount plate. So that's why now I'm adding one hole for each rocket nozzle. And here again, I make use of the circular pattern command so that I just place one hole on each ring and then I repeat it all around uh, without having to create one hole uh, separately. So this should uh, significantly reduce the number of interferences, but we are still have parts overlapping. And what's happening now is that the LEDs of the middle ring are overlapping slightly with the mount plate of the engines. So yeah, you could solve this problem during the assembly process by trimming the LEDs, but it's really tedious work I and mean, I've done it. I don't want to do it again because it's really time consuming. So uh, you do want to fix this problem during the modeling phase. So to remove this interference, the easiest way to do it is to modify slightly the shape of the mount plate and for example, the size of the fillet 
to make a little bit more room for the lights. And now we are clear from interferences. So, now that we have solved the problem of paths overlapping, we can go on to the next step, which is adding a kind of circular section to create the uh, core of the booster. And by adding this new structure, we create new interferences. So what's happening now is that on the outer ring, the LEDs of the engines are slightly overlapping with the hull, means the, the wall of the rocket core. So to remove this interference, I add a small notch in the wall, which is not visible from the outside, so it does not change the aesthetic of the model, but it just makes a bit more room for the LED to fit. So, now that we have our cluster of 31 engines and we have checked for interferences, we can keep drawing the rest of this, uh, this part of the rocket and add these three fins. So I'm not sure about the purpose of these fins. Maybe they have some aerodynamic purpose or maybe they are kinds of tabs so that the clamps of uh, the clamps on the launch mount can grab the rocket and lock it in position when it comes back and lands on the launch mount. So when you're drawing fins, the easiest way to do is to first draw it from the side, then draw it from the front, and you take um, you take a bo Boolean operation of the two volumes to uh, get the shape that you want. And here again, since the three fins have the same shape, I use a circular pattern to create the two remaining fins from the shape of the first one. And once it's done, I merge the fins with the rocket cores and add some nice fillets at the connection between the fin and the circular section. Next, what I'm doing is to segment the uh, rocket core. So I don't need to do that to 3D print it, but I need to segment the, this part to make it easier to assemble. Because the LEDs of the engines has to be wired from the inside, if I have the LEDs at the bottom of a very long pipe, it will be very difficult to like put my soldering iron inside of the pipe and do the soldering work. So to make this work easier to do, I segment the pipe maybe two centimeter away from the mount plate so that I have very shallow wall around the LEDs and this makes the soldering work way easier. And of course, each time you have to mate several parts, you need to add some internal structure as a mating interface. And of course, you have to get the clearance right so that it's tight enough so that the parts don't come loose, but it's loose enough so that you can actually mate the parts. And finally, since this is the place where the control board will be, I create a mount plate for the control board. So as for this spaceship, this will be a board with two Arduinos, one to control the servo motors and one to control the LEDs. So here I first draw a basic rectangle, then drill holes inside the mount plate, um, so using a rectangular pattern. And finally, I trim this rectangle so that it fits nicely inside of the rocket core. And to do that, I create a patch that has the same shape as the inner wall of the rocket core, and I use this patch to trim the rectangle uh, to the right shape. And finally, I merge the mount plate with the rocket core and add some chamfer at the interface. And we're done. Feel free to share this video and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss future episodes.